What's up everyone? Today we're going to uh, continue working on the S10, uh, getting ready to pull the engine out so we can fix that piston and get it all back together. So yeah, let's get to it. <laughs> Alright, so if you watched the last video, you saw that I pulled the head off after doing the leak down test, uh, finding out that uh, that one piston, number 5, uh, is leaking down like 80%. So now I'm getting ready to pull the engine out. I was going to try to leave it in, maybe cut that cross member, uh, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Uh, once I pull the short blower, the engine itself out, I'm going to do some more modifying to the cross member to give it some room. Uh, my big issue right now is it's almost impossible to pull just the engine out of this thing because the whole engine transmission set back and the engine won't go forward enough to get it out. So what I'm going to try to do today is I'm going to try, I'm going to undo the torque converter bolts and then hopefully I can slide the torque converter in enough that I can get the flex plate bolts off and pull the flex plate off. And if I can get the flex plate off, then I'll be able to pull the engine out without taking the transmission out. Otherwise the transmission has to come out. And then if I can get it out that way, then once it's out, the cross member is gonna get modified, which is gonna let the engine go back in without uh, having to have the flex plate off. So we're gonna try that and see what happens. All right, so I took the starter off. I took the torque converter bolts off. I'm not sure if I can get at the flex plate. The converter is pretty big, so it doesn't really give me a lot of room, but uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. But I can also lift the engine a little bit, maybe and when I start taking it out and then get those bolts, but we'll have to see. Uh, I got this exhaust off, some small stuff I started to take off, and then I'll show you what I had to do in the cab, which I should have done originally, but the one bolt hole for the transmission, uh, uh, right, if you can see it, hopefully you can see it there, you should be able to see it. It's really, really hard to get at, and it's definitely hard to get at uh, without, lowering the transmission down. So what I actually ended up doing is just drilling a hole with step bit and uh, I can get at it now through there and then I'll just put like a rubber grommet in there after. This way anytime I need to pull the transmission out, that bolt, last time I put it in, I think it took me half an hour just to get that bolt. So uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna get that bolt out, start unbolting more stuff and uh, continue on. Oh, it's just a little aggravating. I think, I guess it's, uh, it's content, so. I just didn't really want to have to uh, be taking this apart already. It's, uh, definitely hasn't been uh, the easiest on me, this build. But hey, what are you gonna do? It's cars, right? Shit happens. And then you just fix it and figure it out. There we go. There we go. Nice. Water pump, I guess, now, and the exhaust uh, manifold. And then I think just the motor mounts and the trans mount, and it'll be ready to, to do something. All right, so as you can see now, I got pretty much everything off. I was actually able to get the exhaust out of the way uh, once the manifold was off and everything. Uh, so I have it pretty much ready to go. It's the transmission's unbolted, but like I said, I still don't know if I can get the engine out without taking the transmission out. But that'll be next. Hook a chain up to it and undo the motor mounts and try to pull it out. But uh, that's gonna have to wait till tomorrow. But like usual for you guys, tomorrow will be right now. All right, and we're back. So I already took the hood off. Uh, I undid the motor mounts, but I think I have to actually take the motor mount plates off. So I have to like lift the engine up a little bit take the motor mount plates off because it won't pull forward. And then uh, we're gonna try to pull it. Like I said, I don't know what's gonna happen. I, I seem to think I won't be able to get it out without doing something to the transmission. I have the transmission kind of tied up underneath. Uh, I might put the jack under there and jack up on it a little bit, see if that helps. But uh, let's see what happens. All right, so I got those mounts off. And actually, I gave it a little push here and it looks like it actually might come. Oh. I think we're gonna be okay. I think before, when I originally put it in, I tried to put it in with the engine and transmission together, and it wouldn't fit. And then I ended up just putting the engine in and putting the transmission in. But I never tried having the transmission in 
and then put the engine in. But I think we're gonna be okay here. Yep, we. Well, I'm glad I tried it this way. I didn't have to pull the transmission. The water's pouring everywhere. Sweet, well that's, uh, that's awesome. I figured I'd have to pull the transmission and screw around, but it's actually coming out nice like this. Success! Well, that was awesome. I'm really glad that worked out. I also noticed uh, when I was taking the truck apart that there's a couple spots right there. The cylinder head is touching the back of the firewall. And then down there, the exhaust is actually touching part of the firewall or the floor tow board. So that could be, have something to do with what was causing my um, knock sensors maybe because maybe it was banging against and I also think the oil pan was touching the cross member here too a little bit so I'm gonna while the engines out I'm gonna fix all that stuff so I mean yeah it sucks to take the engine out but I might have had to pull it out anyways just to figure this stuff out so uh, yeah I've got the engine on the stand um, and I guess like everyone like me everyone else wants to see what's wrong this is the piston here and at one point when I moved it I thought I could see something I don't know if that's just a ring gap or cracked or what so this is the one that's got to come out so we'll pull the pan and then we'll uh, we'll knock it out and see what we can see all right so I got the pan off uh, I didn't notice anything bad in the pan any kind of metal or anything which is good no shavings none of that kind of stuff like I said before I have parts so um, it's going to be no problem, like, throwing another piston in. I got some more pistons, so. I don't know, this is with this DeWalt gun. I bought it used and, I don't know, it kind of sucks. Sometimes it seems to work okay, other times not so much. Well, the bearing still looks like new, so that's a good sign. Which I knew the bearing would be fine. It's not like it was knocking or anything. And here's the piston. So what do we see? Oh yeah. I see it's cracked right here. Oh, here we go. This is exactly what the other piston was like. Hold on, let me take this top ring off. So there you see that what happened. Which is weird because, like I said, that's pretty much the same thing that was wrong with this engine when I got it. Uh, number seven was exactly the same piece broken out. Two pieces actually broke off this one and this one. But really, the rest of this piston looks not bad. The other one that came out of number seven was way worse. So, yeah, so just need a piston and we'll be good to go. And that's the thing too, I, I mean, I probably, like I said, it was still, it still was running good. I probably could have kept driving it other than the fact that it was smoking a bunch. It probably, it was still running fine, but who wants that, right? So like I said, we'll get another piston out of stock and we'll throw it in and we can put the short block back together or long block back together. Once I get this back together, then I got to do those couple modifications on the firewall and stuff and then it'll be ready to go back in so uh, i don't know if i'll be able to get it all back in today or not but we'll see what happens first we'll uh we'll have to get a piston and fix this up take a look at the cam everything looks good down there awesome i got the new piston switched over i actually ended up using the rod that came from this engine i didn't want to switch rods out but i switched up the piston same as i did with this one uh, use the rings because they're so good, bearings and all that. Now we're just going to slide it in. We're going to use this nice piston ring and compressor that Clayton made, which works awesome. There you go, just like that. 
They actually sell those piston ring tools, install tools at Summit or probably other places. But Clayton made that one. Trust the old bendy out. turning that's good so I ended up pulling of the next piston out um, just to check it I started thinking well maybe you know I should take a look even though the leak down was good and uh, this one looks good so I thought I'd at least check make sure that there's nothing uh, bad about it but uh, it looks all right bolt this on put the pickup tube on if you remember I had that leak over here so I figured maybe the pan's a little warped. So I just put a nice coat of silicone on both sides of the gasket, let it dry. I'm just letting the oil pan drain and then put the oil pan back on and then the bottom end is buttoned back up. And then we'll put the head back on. Put the head back on and the valve, uh, valve cover. The rocker's back on, valve covers, all that stuff. I didn't bother filming it because I'm sure you guys have seen that a hundred times in other videos where we took the heads off, put them on, etc. So it's pretty much ready to go back in. I had to go in there and uh, on the firewall there, I had to bang it in a little bit because I think the cylinder head was touching there. And then I think the exhaust over there, I hit it a bunch of times. Um, I thought it was hitting on the cross member of the engine, but it doesn't look like it. I actually, where I kind of thought it was, I took a flap wheel and I just flap wheeled it down a little bit. So now I'm gonna put the engine back in. So I'll get it back in at least today, and then uh, next time I'll have to start putting it back together. Getting it in might be a little tricky. That's what she said. Also got all this wire and stuff to deal with. To make sure I'm not breaking anything, or squishing anything, or getting it caught in anywhere. Too many freaking wires. Oh, oh so close. I think that's it. I think it is on the dowels. Yep. Perfect. Okay, so now I just gotta get a couple bolts in there to bolt it together, and then I can put the engine mounts back on. I was actually planning on stopping working on the truck, but then I kinda started to add a part and add a part and add a part, and I pretty much got it all back together. Uh, I didn't really film it because I was kinda in the zone and whatever. You've seen it go together before. Uh, was basically just bolting everything back on which is on uh, the only thing I still have to do is the starter the torque converter bolts the transmission bolts uh, tighten up the exhaust here and at the bottom and then put the uh, turbo blanket on and pretty much it'll be ready to run so yeah it's, it went pretty fast uh, it was a good day to take a day off uh, believe it or not it's been super cold here lately and today it was beautiful it was like 20 four degrees Celsius, whatever that is in Fahrenheit. It was, or whatever, yeah, whatever. It was, it was warm anyways, and it was sunny, and uh, I had the door open, and I'm actually hot right now. And I'm just heading out to go take the Jimmy for a little ride, because I haven't really driven in in a while, because it's been so crappy out. Next video, we'll get this thing running again, and hopefully the weather holds up, and we can actually take it out and drive it. I still want to take it to the weigh scales and weigh it and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for that, and uh, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll check you later.